Yeah. It's been a while. So I've been nagged in real life about not uploading more videos because apparently someone out there liked it. Uh, I didn't abandon the channel. Life just kind of happens in spurts. So to catch up, I've gone through family drama, family trauma, a new kid, new job, new jobs with an S, server rebuilds, new game project, beating the steam by the Russians for that game project, collapsing markets, rebuilding markets, I moved across the country, then had all my stuff stolen by movers, and to top it all off, I tore my favorite shirt on a fence outside. But here we are, rebuilt and ready to go. So we're gonna talk about physical media. So, Physical media is in the cultural zeitgeist at the moment, with both Walmart and Best Buy announcing the end of stocking physical games and Blu-rays at their brick-and-mortar locations. This is seen by some as very... Bad news bears. ...as it comes exactly at the same time as the contraction phase of the streaming wars. Netflix, Hulu, D+, and the rest have all announced price increases and sharing crackdowns, making it even more apparent that we only stream things at the pleasure of our corporate overlords. At any moment, some NBA could piss off another NBA somewhere in La La Land, and all of a sudden you could find yourself stranded on a Saturday morning without access to that one Looney Tunes 50th anniversary special starring Fred Savage and Little Richard that you're certain your kid would enjoy because you had it on VHS and watched it like 200 times, not realizing that's only because you only had that one tape. That and lost at Dinosaur World, but... So what can we do about it? Physical media, and by that I mean DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4K discs, are a hassle. In a world where you can scroll through millions of titles on 12 different platforms and still think it's all trash, having to get out of your seat and handle discs seems exhausting. Luckily, like most problems stemming from laziness, there are software solutions. The two most popular software suites available right now for starting your own in-home streaming service are Plex and Plex's hotter, younger sister who hasn't quite got her life together yet, but at least she knows she's not going to give up on her dreams like Plex did. Jellyfin. Let's talk about Jellyfin. Jellyfin is an open source project that you can install on a device on your home network that serves up streaming video content to anything that can run either a web browser or the app. It can support up to 4K video files, and the interface is pretty close to what you should be expecting from commercial streaming services. It handles most of the work behind the scenes, including loading trivia from IMDb and organizing sequels into collections. All in all, it's pretty simple to set up since it's available for Linux, Windows, Mac as a Docker container, and there's even a plugin for a Synology NAS. Once you follow the handy installation guide in the description below, you just open up a web browser or the app, and put in the IP address of the device that you installed it to. And bam, you're basically Netflix. Your server won't be available outside your home network, but that's probably for the best since it would be massively stupid to try to stream unlicensed content. Speaking of which... Serving up your own video files for your own consumption within your own home is not illegal at least not in freedom land and in some parts of America's hat. Making backup copies of physical media you own is also not illegal in any way. However, distributing those copies over BitTorrent or taking your Jellyfin server to a bar and playing Princess Bride on the chic exposed brick is illegal. And the same RIAA bastards that nailed Granny to the wall in 1999 will be breathing down your neck like your name is Elian Gonzalez. Long story short, if you purchased a disk, you can store and serve it digitally in your own network. Now the fun part. So this is going to kick up a storm because there are a million different opinions about how RAID should be set up. Ultimately, this will come down to personal appetite for risk. My server runs on a RAID 1 setup, which means that if I have a disk failure, I can recover easily and replace in a reasonable time frame. I have a minor spin up and spin down delays, but then again, I'm only ever streaming to maybe two clients at once. 
a fuller household with multiple clients running at the same time would probably want RAID 5 or, or something like that. That being said, you will absolutely want a dedicated machine. There are plenty of people who run Jellyfin from the machine that they stream off of, but why? No, seriously, why? Think about your life choice. And yes, Peter, I'm talking to you. Stop screwing up, okay? Just download VLC and stop wasting my time with tech support questions. Also, sell your van. It's awful. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, you have many choices for hardware. Like I mentioned earlier, you can install Jellyfin on any platform, really. A lot of people go with the Synology route because of the simplicity of handling everything in one place. You buy one of their awesome NASes and just drop your files on it and you're done. My quibble with that is that those devices seldom have enough power to pump out the videos reasonably, so I always default to dedicated hardware. For my setup, I have 32 gigs of RAM, a 3 gigahertz i7, and a Skyrim Edition GTX 30 whatever from 10 years ago for transcoding. A GPU really isn't required for playback, but it does help a lot with higher resolution streaming. I'm running all this with Debian 12 and I'm using the SystemD binary, although the Docker container would have worked just as well. As previously mentioned, installation was simple and easy, and I had the demo start screen in minutes after installing the OS. As for the partitions, I have two hard drives in the RAID 1 holding the library, and the OS is installed on an NVMe SSD for ripping. Ripping is the act of copying video from the physical disks that you've legally purchased for archival purposes. It's the backbone of what we're talking about here. Once you have Jellyfin set up, you'll need to feed it content, and if you want to watch something other than that 240i crooked video of your fifth birthday party at the beach, you'll need to start ripping. For ripping, I use another great open source project called Automatic Ripping Machine or ARM. It's a Docker container that greatly streamlines the whole process, providing completely headless operation. It literally will detect when you insert a new disk and start ripping immediately after collecting metadata from across the web. Unfortunately, there are a few caveats. Only some drives are supported, and even then, most need some sort of firmware change in order to handle 4K disks. I use the LG WH16NS40, link in the description, but I haven't bothered with the 4K update yet. ARM supports multiple drives running at once, so if you have a large disk collection that you want to blow through real quick, go ahead and buy as many as your motherboard supports. One especially cool feature is that despite being headless, ARM gives you this really nice UI that allows you to monitor or rip in progress. The interface allows you to correct any metadata mistakes it may have made, as well as get an idea about how long a rip will take, which could actually be a really long time. Higher quality video can sometimes take up to 24 hours depending on your hardware setup, so don't wait until the night your friends are expected to come over to watch your back channel copy of Dangerous Cousins to start the rip. Once a rip is finished, it's just a simple matter of copying the rip files, including the special features, over to the storage partition for Jellyfin and clicking the update button. Congratulations, Mr. Hulu. You now run a wildly successful streaming service that managed to capture 100% of the households in your target region, which of course is your living room. Streaming services are highly dependent on political and economic machinations outside of our control. And as we've seen with shows like Scrubs, we can't take anything for granted. The contents of my Jellyfin server, however, cannot be taken away unless someone physically breaks in and, you know, takes it away. There's no call home or license server since it's an open source project. So even if GitHub torpedoes it tomorrow, I'll still have my library, which is growing every day. We're in a special time where disk media is ridiculously cheap. But that's probably going to change soon with the aforementioned brick and mortar shops suspending sales. I would say that if you don't start stockpiling physical copies of movies and TV shows now, you're likely going to lose your chance within the next couple of years. I'm sure places like Criterion and Amazon will continue to sell them for some time, but the price is surely going to increase dramatically. Time will tell. So until next time. a sex symbol? Perhaps most noteworthy for me is how comfortable he's always been with his sexuality. Oh, and I'm working on a video game uh, that I'm really excited about.
more than my last project that I was really excited about. Let me know if anyone's interested in devlogs or whatever, because I'm on the fence about what I should do about it. Uh, I was serious about the intro list where I said the Russians kind of stole my idea. I don't know if they actually stole the idea of the game that I was working on. Probably not. But apparently we were working on the same game idea at the same time, and they just beat me to Steam, and then I lost all whatever. That's not this. This is something new. So let me know if you want to see that. Okay, that's it. Go now.